What's up, guys? Dizzy Kishi, and we are here. Figure, why are you still vlogging? Yeah, because I can't. No. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so we are at the Milwaukee Bucks and Marquette Arena here in Milwaukee, and uh, here's the tour. Nathan, 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 go down. Yes. Now. Okay, everybody. I'll pay you. Look at that. Alright, pictures. Um, anybody know how many seats are in this building? 10,500. 21 is close. 25. It's about 17,500. Uh, it's one of the smaller buildings in the NBA. The biggest one is in Chicago, I believe, which is like 21, 22 maybe. Um, our old building had 18,700, so we went down by about 1,200 seats. A couple reasons for that. Number one, uh, nobody likes sitting in the top couple rows of this uh, arena anyway, so we just took those out. Number two, we put uh, cup holders in every seat, which the old building didn't have. And we added a couple inches of width in every seat and a couple inches of leg room. Uh, it doesn't really seem like a lot when you just say a couple inches here, a couple inches there, but when you multiply that by 17,000, it adds up pretty quickly and it takes up a lot of space. Uh, and then the third reason was we added more seats on the floor and a few more seats in our premium level, which we'll go to in a little bit, which is the suite level in the middle uh, where our suites are. Um, so in, in that regard, the seats that you're sitting in right here, anybody have any idea what they cost tonight? 10,000. More than that. 15. Keep going. 20. Keep going. Keep going. 25, 50. 30, 30. Uh, the seats you're sitting in cost about 50,000 for the year. For the year. For the year. For the year. Uh, yep. Just but for today. <laughs> there's a minimum of a three year commitment, and that's per seat. So you're looking at probably $600,000 or so to sit down here. Uh, the ones on the sideline are probably closer to 100000 per year. Uh, again, minimum of a three year commitment. So we are sold out of floor seats for the next two years uh, since we started last year with these contracts. Um, the reason for that is if you added up everybody, just for tonight's game, if you took that per game cost, which probably is a little over $1,000 per game, if you added that up for all the three rows of courtside seating, it would give us more revenue throughout the year if we sold out those seats than if we sold all the rest of the 17,000 seats in here combined. So it was very important that we filled those seats. Uh, it's the reason I still have a job and get paid. Um, the scoreboard here behind us, up until about two weeks ago, was the largest in-the-round scoreboard in the world. Uh, and in-the-round means that the entire thing is one giant LED board. So right now you see the Heat logo, you see the Bucks logo, you see the Replay Center, you see the stats on the top. That's all different variations of the same screen. So if we wanted to put one giant image that wrapped all the way around, we could. Um, that record no longer stands. This is when the Golden State Warriors opened up their building earlier this year. Theirs is a little bit bigger than ours, but we had a good run while it lasted. Um, it's not the largest scoreboard in the world, because those in football stadiums like Dallas and Jacksonville are significantly larger being outside, uh, but theirs is not symmetrical. It doesn't go all the way around. Um, the building itself costs about $550 million to build. Uh, it was half taxpayer money, half from the city, and half uh, from private investments. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, on the other side. Uh, the floor itself is made up of uh, just about 300 wooden panels. 
Um, it's a giant puzzle, really. So what happens when we take the cord up is every panel is a little bit of a square. And if you look close enough, you might be able to see where the creases are. And then we'll stack them it's like puzzle pieces, and they're all numbered. So when we roll out the, the cord to put it down, it's just a stack of large wooden panels, but they're in order. And then we just place them on the cord, and they fit exactly within each other. Uh, we have primarily three cords that we use. The Bucks floor, obviously. The Bucks alternate floor, which is primarily black rather than the green you see and then the Marquette University Court, um, which we set up as well. And that totals about 65, 70 events throughout the year, depending on how far we go in the playoffs. Hopefully it's closer to 80 or 90. Um, it costs about $5,000 every time we put it down. And it takes uh, maybe about two hours or so, um, which used to take a lot longer. Um, but now with the amount of staff and the amount of technology we put into it, it's a lot quicker in this building than it used to be. Um, what other events do you have? You said you have concerts here, yeah. you have the Bucks, you have my anything else you guys do? Yeah, so primarily we have the Bucks games, which is 41 regular season, two preseason, and then we'll have about 20 Marquette games. Um, our goal is to have about 120 events in here per year, which is about a third of the year, which is crazy. Um, it's it's obtainable, but we're not quite there yet. So there are a lot of, a lot of concerts, like I said, a lot of uh, family shows. We have Disney on Ice coming in, the Monster Jam is coming in, WWE will be here in a couple weeks. Uh, Cirque du Soleil will be here in the winter time. Um, we'll have stuff like that. Uh, we've had comedy shows uh, from things like Jim Gaffigan, um, things like that. But then we've also had smaller stuff, smaller comedy shows like comedians I've never even heard of. We'll do up in this Panorama Club. So we'll even have smaller events in here that don't pertain to the entire building. Uh, we'll have events on the live block and stuff like that. Uh, like what I mentioned, the haunted houses outside is activated uh, four times a week. Uh, from the end of September to the beginning of November, stuff like that. When you have a concert, where do they set up? Right where we're sitting. The stage is always going to be on this side. Uh, the sta seats I'm st standing in are retractable, um, as is that side, but this side goes up a little bit farther to give them more space. Uh, so the stage is always here, one, for the space, because we have extra space on this side, and number two, because across from us here, where we'll go up in a little bit, these are our loft spaces. Um, again, another space where people are spending a good amount of money to have a premium experience. And we want to make sure that those people who are spending the most amount of money with us have the best view of the stage. So we'll always build it across from those areas, which are obviously permanent. Um, right now, we ranked, uh, just recently I learned this, we ranked 29th in the world in, uh, excuse me, 29th in the country. I don't know, that's right. I don't remember it now. Shoot. 29th in the... I don't remember if it's the country or the world now. But we rank uh, internationally and nationally in total tickets sold uh, throughout the course of the year. Um, so that has to do with both the number of people we fit in this building and then the amount of events we hold throughout the year. Uh, and to put that in perspective, we're about 150,000 tickets ahead of Chicago, ahead of the United Center, which is kind of crazy considering how many more people Chicago has than Milwaukee has. But uh, we've done an incredible job of activating events here in the past year and a half. Um, Anything else about the court I'm forgetting, or about the arena itself, about the basketball portion, <laughs> anything like that? Uh, these are probably more reasonable. You're looking at three hundred dollars per game versus a couple thousand for the other four, three four hundred dollars. I would say these are also only available in season tickets. I would say probably six or seven. Nine thousand dollars per year, something like that. Nice. <laughs> Super huge, actually, um, but it has its own private players' lounge in it, 
And in that flare slouch, all the furniture, especially for driving for NBA players as well, so you won't find it in stores. It's not store bought. Uh, it's specifically built for like seven foot tall individuals. Uh, it also has in every locker, it has a vent in the top of it. So when the door closes, it clicks the vent down and it sucks all the air out. So it keeps the locker room you, smell uh, away from the locker room. Uh, so you put your sweaty shoes, your sweaty gear in your locker, you close the door, it sucks all that air out. And uh, I always like to close this directly into the locker room. Basketball. Just tell the world, what is your favorite team? I don't know, I kind of like the Bulls because I grew up in Chicago with the Bulls fan. Just saw it. Three, seven, or ten year contracts. You get every Bucks game and every Marquette game uh, that comes through this building, and that's all inclusive food and beverage, uh, weight service staff, things like that. So every loft space is kind of like a balcony. Uh, that overlooks, and this is what I mentioned, is always going to be looking across the stage if you choose to purchase it for a concert or something like that. Um, and it all ha each one has a private um, dinner table attached to it as well. So it's like going to a restaurant, you'll have a wait staff come take care of you, take your order, uh, bring you food, bring you drinks, and everything's complimentary, it's all paid for with your ticket, uh, and then you have your own private space to watch the dinner. Yeah, that's super great. This is a I have, I have to go to the court after this. Oh, okay. Yeah, dude. It's like every day. This is premium one out of one, one version Milwaukee Bucks artwork. Right there, right there. so far, uh, or excuse me, not similar to the ones we've seen so far. This one is open to the public. So anybody with a ticket to the event can come up here and hang out um, before the game, during the game, um, and even on rare occasions, we'll say we're open after the game. Um, we've had private events up here, like wedding receptions, and things like that. We've had, this is where the comedian was before I told you about. We've had silent disco up here and things like that. Um, more so, we just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to feel like you know, they, they can get an exclusive experience as well, um, not just the people who are spending a lot of money with us. Uh, small change from last year to this year is 
Uh, shrubs back here. And the seats you see on the rail now are all real up. So last year we sold through, uh, we sold out probably 80% of our games last year and every game after December 1st was sold out. Uh, so we added uh, this new space to try to just fit more people in the building and to get more people uh, to the games. Um, so we roped off these as our ticketed seats now, uh, rather than staying rolling like they used to be. Uh, and behind these shrubs is uh, where you would have all inclusive uh, food and beverage as well. So we'd have appetizers, entrees, desserts, and stuff up here uh, should you purchase these seats um, as, a, as a premium space. Uh, but otherwise, it's still open to the public uh, in the areas we're in now. Look, look, look at this view, bro. That's perfect. Almost half court. Uh, we're in the upper deck, but that's totally fine. Six foot one eight. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, I gotta tell you something, okay? What's up? I don't wanna be here anymore. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, dude. Yeah, let's go. Let's do. I'm tired as <laughs> like it is 9:14. It is past my bedtime. I go to bed. My uncle's gonna be 8:30, but I'm a rebel. I go to bed at 8:40. Whoa! I know, I know. <laughs> wow. Hide your, hide your children. Yeah. I'm impressed. 